Thanks for having me. Oh, okay, and I, I, I didn't get Glenn's uh, uh, recording. I apologize because I have just started recording now uh, for people. So, so I just want to repeat for the recording uh, because I'm, st I'm starting a little late on that recording that I want to welcome everyone to this District 2 Council meeting. Bienvenue à tous. Uh, I wanted to uh, introduce Glenn J. Nashen, who is a uh, former city councillor for 25 years in the city, uh, is the chair of uh, the VCOPS, the founder of VCOPS, and uh, great to have Glenn with me. He's one of my my advisors. He's been an advisor to me uh, long before I became a councillor, when I was writing for the newspaper. He's a good friend, and I and, uh, appreciate having his guidance. Uh, I want to welcome uh, Leor Azarad, city councillor uh, for District 6, who's been with us for uh, this mandate, and I'm working very close with Lior. He's doing an outstanding job on sponsorship. Uh, Lior, welcome, and I hope uh, that uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, this might be uh, you know the beginning of the next, uh, the first Lior Azarad uh, district meeting. We will be having a meeting together, though, uh, as we'll tell people to talk about the Cavendish Mall. Lior, yeah. So thank you very much, Mike. Thanks for having me on your uh, on the, your meeting, and uh, hello to everyone and uh, councillors and residents. So yes, we will be having a meeting that's going to be focused more on the uh, master plan, which will which connects a few of the districts together and we'll be concentrating on that in the, in the future, absolutely. And I'll invite you all to uh, my district meeting when I have one as well, and we'll post it and hopefully get Mike to, uh, to plug it as, all, as much as he plugged his. When we talk to Cavendish, we may have some stuff. Uh, Councillor Dita Burke, who was with us. Uh, Dita, are you there? Uh, yeah, hi. See... hi, Mike. Hi. Okay, Dita, welcome. Hi, Thank everyone. you for joining Thank me. You. Dita is, of course, our deputy mayor, and she may have some comments on some of the items on tonight's agenda. So, Dita, thank you very much for for joining uh, joining me on at this uh, at this meeting. And of course, uh, Dita, I think we'll have something to say. Uh, I'm happy she's here. Uh, also, uh, Councillor Erdely, I notice has joined us. Are you with our Councillor Erdely? Yes, I'm here. It's uh, it's nice to be here. Oh, and where are you outside? It looks. I... I'm outside for now, and uh, but I might be going inside soon. But Beautiful. for now, I'm outside in the backyard. Okay, so if Stephen is still with us, Stephen and Dita can help uh, answer some of the questions about Hydro Quebec, which is a big subject and a very important meeting taking place next Monday at, at our uh, Aquatic and Community Center. So thank you very much, Stephen. Uh, uh, we also have uh, David Torgman with us tonight. David, a former city councillor, former director of public works, and somebody who... Uh, uh, was a, a big help to me during his uh, time on council with traffic. Uh, welcome, David. Thank you, Mike. Pleasure to be here. All right. Good to have you, David. And uh, belated happy birthday. I saw it on Facebook. Uh, and uh, and so we, we're, we're going to begin. We have uh, we have two guest speakers with us right now. Uh, one is uh, Isabella Pietrocupo, who is uh, uh, our environmental technician. And we also have with us Spiro Yotis. Now, Spiro had to go to the airport to pick somebody up. So he's joining us right now. Spiro, are you there? Hey, hey Mike, I'm here. Thank you, Spiro, for joining us. I, I'm going to start with Spiro and then we'll move to uh, Isabella because we don't want to keep them. They're working off hours. Uh, Spiro, I just wanted if you could first explain your role as our traffic engineer and uh, Glenn can help me moderate. If people have any questions on traffic, this is a real pleasure to have Spiro with us. He's an amazing uh, person to have on staff. He is always available when we talk to him. He he speak. He calls back residents, and I know we you know he he gets back to them on issues. So Spiro, if you quickly just want to explain the role you play in the city, and if people have any questions, anything related to traffic uh, in District Two. Uh, or nearabouts, uh, just uh, please use the raised hand button and we'll recognize you. Go ahead, Spiro. Well, thanks uh, for the kind words, Mike. Uh, so uh, my role as a traffic engineer in the city is anything uh, regarding traffic lights, speeding, roads, sidewalks, uh, any, anything that's pretty much on the road uh, you can talk to me about. And my main project this year, which uh, I'm uh, managing is the road reconstruction. And if you're not aware yet, we will be doing uh, some major roads this year, uh, which is going to start at the end of next month. And there will be probably some, uh, let's say, delays going through those areas. So just, just as a quick uh, overview, a section of Cavendish will be done, Cavend the Cavendish overpass 
Fleet, Sir Winston Churchill, Hartwell, Parkhaven, Merton, as a general uh, guideline of what we're touching on this year for road reconstruction. All right, and Daryl Levine is with us as well. Thank you, Daryl. And I know Daryl and Spiro work very closely to let people know about these. You follow our website, follow our our Facebook pages, and you could see that. Uh, now, does anyone have any questions for Spir a Spiro about any traffic concerns they they have? Uh, 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 maybe Spiro, before uh, the hands go up, uh, Glenn, if you notice any hands, please let me know. I don't I don't see any right now. Um, uh, uh, Spiro, uh, people ask me about speed bumps, uh, and, uh, everyone wants a speed bump, but we're very specific about speed bumps. Can you explain why we don't give everybody a speed bump? So a lot of things need to be in, uh, an alignment to put a speed hump on a street. Uh, in terms of how we approach it is we typically test a street. We have multiple ways of testing a street. And then once these tests come back, if we see there's a high volume and high speeding, we can then explore the idea of putting a speed hump. But again, uh, you might not want to put it for uh, a quick example is if you're in an area where uh, the snow removal trucks pass as their route, you might not want a speed hump in that specific zone because it's gonna obviously cause a lot of problems for the snow removal. You also don't want to have snow uh, speed humps in main collector streets, as we want cars to be using those streets and be uninterfered with. So there's obviously a lot of factors, but we look at a list of things before adding a speed hump. And we don't want to. Uh, and another thing is we don't want to put many on one stretch. And in some districts, we want to avoid putting them and try to look at other traffic calming measures. We did have, uh, by the way, we have been fortunate in District Two to get a speed, and I will. We see some hands up, so I will acknowledge them. We we did uh, we did get uh, speed bumps on Mark uh, Mark Chagall, uh, on Sir Walter Scott, uh, and before I let uh, Norman Sabin ask the first question, and then Edna, uh, uh, I wanted to ask you, Spiro. Uh, we I we got a request from uh, Park Place, which is uh, kind of a it's a dead end street where it turns around, but there's a lot of people who use it as a shortcut. And I know we've put up some speed calming signs. What's your comment to people there about the the speeding of cars uh, that visit uh, Park Place? What 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 can you say to those residents? Well, in terms of a shortcut, I don't know if Park Place can really be used as a shortcut. Yeah, sorry, I, I didn't mean a shortcut. What I meant is people who mistakenly want to turn their car around instead of going into the mall. So they kind of instead of instead of going deep into the parking lot, they 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 do use it. It's a weird kind of shortcut, but they do go there, you know, and they, uh -huh. they, they speed around the bend because they realize they want to get out of there. And there's a lot of kids playing on the street and they do it a lot on Shabbat when when they can't people can't use their phones and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Again, in a situation like this, you want to be more clear and maybe try to communicate to the driver more clearly that they're entering a cul-de-sac and prevent this type of behavior. Because if we were to get a correct uh, vehicle behavior, then you wouldn't have the problem here, as opposed to an actual cut through street. Even if you tell people not to use it, people will still find ways to use it because it's just faster to get to their point B. So Park Place being a cul-de-sac, I don't think warrants a speed hump. I think it just warrants uh, more clear signage at the entry saying that it is, uh, let's say, local traffic, uh, dead end, or maybe more clear signage to enter the mall. And what about the, the there, but bo bollards were up last year. Are you putting the bollards back on Park Place? Well, this is one of the issues. We try, we try our best to put these bollards in strategic places, but then you'll have certain residents that don't like the, the, the placement. It might interfere a bit with how they get in and out of their driveway. So it's so heavily on the curbs. It's so heavily, um, there, there's so, all, all sorts of driveways along the curbs at Park Place that the places that we want to put this traffic coming, it's almost impossible not to uh, hinder some of these people from getting into their driveway very comfortably. So that's the kind of conflict we had, but there's always something that could be done. So we could, we could keep trying to find a solution that is both good for slowing the people down and 
doesn't uh, interfere with the residents. Yeah, because I know one of the residents uh, asked me to ask you that question at tonight's meeting because she couldn't make it. So um, I'm going to go to the questions because I want to make sure we get through the agenda and give uh, our other speakers a chance. So uh, Edna C, Edna C, go ahead. You can, and then Norman Sabin will be second. Edna, go ahead. Hi, I have a couple of questions. Uh, the first one is, I'm sure I'm not the only one with these cars that are making unbelievable noise at night running up and down the streets. I'm finally able to open the windows and it's so distracting. And a lot of times it's literally frightening. I live on Rembrandt and I can just, I don't even know where they are, but the noise level is absolutely incredible. Is there anything that can be done? I know it's the entire area that's got the issue. You're talking about, uh, Edna, you're talking about uh, like uh, what time of night are we talking about when you're hearing this terrible noise? Oh, even 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night. They just come speeding. I don't know what they do with their mufflers or whatever, but mm -hmm. it's absolutely terrible. Okay, now we used to have the police station right at that corner. Of course we don't, but uh, I will ask Spiro to take a note of it for the traffic committee where we have the police on the committee. Uh, I, I, ha I have heard complaints like this in the past but uh, but uh, I uh, I haven't heard it lately. So Spiro, you'll take note of that. Any comments? Uh, sure. I mean, so is this? You're saying the noise is from speeding, or it's from uh, actual type of car? No, it's the type of car, and they're. I mean, it's just it's unreal how loud these cars are at night. And I can just hear them zooming, especially along Kildare. Well, if they're speeding, there's an issue. If they're, if they, you know, if, if they're driving with a muffler that doesn't work, the police can do something about it as well. But we've taken note of it, Edna. So, uh, and I'll be eager to hear if other people from Rembrandt are hearing the same thing. So, thank you for your question. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah. Okay. Mary, thank you. About just for a minute, please. I note that the white lines on Cavendish are almost gone, and when you're going north, uh, south. It's it's very hard. We're a lot of senior drivers and are not quite visual as they should be. And I understand that you've got to do um, repairs on Cavendish, but is there no way to have those lines painted again? Okay, uh, good question. Spiro, go ahead. There is, a, there is a program for line painting. Spiro, is that on the list, Cavendish? Yeah, we're, we're, we're currently going through the list. We put some th things in priority first because we noticed, uh, while well, we had a lot of complaints for people hitting the speed bumps uh, and without the yellow uh, arrows on the speed humps, uh, a lot of people weren't seeing them. So we prioritized certain things. That was one of them. And uh, the contractor is slowly moving his way through the list. So yes, that's going to be painted. And uh, with with the reconstruction on Cavendish, there's going to be long duration paint. So it's not only going to be painted as part of our regular yearly line painting contract, but it will be uh, a section will be repainted in a more long duration paint. So that's uh, that's positive. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, and I'll I'll get to the other questions. Uh, I'll have Glenn uh, read the chat ones for me when we get through the actual question. Norman Sabin, go ahead, Norman. Hi, Mike. Thanks for taking my pesh question. Sure. Hi, Spiro. I had a question about speed bumps. Uh, obviously, they they prevent speeding and they slow drivers down. We all know that. But the ultimate benefit is to prevent accidents, right? I mean, that's really why we put them there. Um, there are many streets like Einstein, where I live, that has that between 1980 and 2010, when speed bumps were not there, there was not a single accident. And then in 2010, we, we installed two speed bumps. My question is, if you have a street that has never had a speeding related accident, a car hasn't hit another car, a pedestrian, a kid, a senior, a dog, whatever, how will speed bumps make that street safer if it's never had an accident, a speeding related accident? Yeah. Okay, good question. Go ahead, uh, Spiro. Thanks for the question, Norman. Nice to see you again. Um, these these uh yes for, for certain places that have had no accidents it's not usually the reason we put up humps we usually put up humps when people are worried about something happening so we, we try not to act reactively we we put these humps up in areas where we do test and we see speeding and people not obeying the speed limit signs and we want we want to just have uh we want to prevent 
potential accidents instead of saying, okay, there was an accident, let's put a speed hump. We always want to be proactive. Yeah, I understand that, but you know, the, the past does to some degree predict the future. And if you have a street that's never had an accident in 30 years, how will speed bumps make it safer? Yes, again, uh, we're, we're just trying to prevent things, but uh, I see your point. And a lot of times in different areas, we do point to these statistics. We now have these statistics with public security where we can see like the past 10, 15 years to see if there was accidents. And oftentimes we'll say, listen, it's a it's safe area. There hasn't been any accidents. We don't see any reason to put something right now. So we don't do it. But in other moments, uh, we do install, even if there hasn't been an accident, to just, again, try to prevent it. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna Norman, I'm gonna, just to be fair, cause I, we have a long agenda. I'm gonna go to the next uh, question, if you don't mind. Uh, I don't wanna, I want people to really ask one question if they could, but they could email me at mcohen at coatsyluke.org for any questions that weren't answered and we'll, we'll follow that up for you. Uh, uh, Eric, uh, Eric, just to identify yourself, Eric. Yes, hi, uh, I'm actually with Eric Wazana. I'm Jerry Alfassi. We both live on Jubilee. So I'm going to go back to the issue of uh, Park Place. I think you guys were a little bit mistaken because Park Place is a, is a cul de sac. You cannot shortcut anything. Yeah, well, uh, sorry. Uh, I, I, I explained, Eric, what I meant was people um, don't want to go when, they're, when they realize they're, they have to turn around on Kellert. It's, it's still a shortcut because they can go around and go back. They loop around and go back onto Cavendish. So they, it's a crazy kind of shortcut, but they are, yeah. they are using it that way. And they might be doing it on Jubilee as well. So, so basically, we, have, we live on Jubilee. And actually, we're uh, maybe like a dozen homes here. And really need to get out of your way to come on our street to a shortcut. So that's what we're talking about. I, I, I think that the, the speed bumps is not the way to do it here because we have all our children in the streets and people are like flying just because they want to go faster yes through us through our street yeah we're about 18 children in the in yeah exactly and um and we would like to understand like maybe the boulders would be to not let people come in meaning you don't even it's actually takes it, there's there's no reason for people to come in on, into that street if you don't live here you know what i mean yeah do we have any signs, Spiro, on Jubilee like we do on Park Place? Because the signs that we put up to tell people, you know, a picture of kids and a slow down, they, they do have an effect. Do we have any on Jubilee, Spiro? No, we have nothing. We don't have any signs, no, on Jubilee. Is that something we can do? Because it's a similar problem. We had it on Elan Ramon. It did, it did wonders, those signs. Uh, is that something we could look at, uh, Spiro? Yeah, sure. Okay, um, so, but if I might add one last thing, the signs would be great. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, we're all trying to just protect the children. You know what I mean? Uh, would would there be a possibility to, to I don't know. You guys would have to look into it to make it harder for people to come into the street instead of just having signs because nobody needs to get in here. If yeah, if, but uh, Eric, uh, that's not something that really could be done in terms of making like a private street. I know that was once <laughs> tried decades ago by the late Mayor Lang on his street. He was the mayor at the time and it didn't go over very well. But I but I think that we you know, I take my walks, Eric, and I see you on the street uh, several times a week. And um, um, uh, next time I see you, we'll we'll do a little bit of a, of a watch on there myself. But uh, I, I've, we, we, we did help the cause on Alain Ramon. We had the exact same problem um, and the signs did wonders. Uh, we even put some on the street. So Spiro's right across the street. So uh, he's he, he will take notes and he will show up and take a walk on Jubilee himself and take a look. So let's see what we can do. Much appreciated. Thank you very much. Uh, Toby Shulman, my honorary uh, resident. Toby, are you there? Okay. Hey, okay. There we go. I, I just wanted to continue what Edna was saying. I believe that the cars are, uh, are driving uh, fast and with those special wheels or whatever, I believe it's on Cavendish. And this has been years and years and years that people are complaining and nothing has ever been done about it. <clears throat> My daughter just stayed with me for three days. She came in from Ottawa. She couldn't go to sleep at night because of that. She wasn't used to it. I'm used to it, but she wasn't. So I really think that the, the police yeah. have to take a stronger stand on, on something like this. Well, we've got, Spiro's made note of it. You also have a um, a quorum of city councillors listening to you. So uh, so uh, we've definitely taking note of it. That's the purpose of these meetings. So thank you, Toby. I appreciate okay. it. 
Thank, uh, you. thank you. Glenn, do we have any questions in the chat that could be read out? Well, there's one from Steve Spoduck asking when the lines and crosswalks will be painted. Maybe there's a um, a timeline that Spiro can uh, let us know about. Yeah, crosswalks have already started. Uh, I know uh, we definitely have done crosswalks already. So crosswalks are underway probably this weekend. There'll be more progress there and uh, the lines right after that. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. Glenn, any other questions on the chat? That's it for now. Okay, terrific. Okay, so uh, I, I thank you very much. Spiro, I thank you so much for your time. I want to move to Isabella because she's also working off hours and, and let her say a few words. So, so thank you, Spiro. Really appreciate it. And again, if anybody has any questions that they think of, email me at mcohen at coatsyloop.org and I will uh, speak to Spiro. As I said, customer service is his middle name. So thank you very much, Spiro. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Okay, so Isabella Pietrakupo is with us today, another person who's always there to assist, and I really always appreciate and appreciate her uh, working with us off hours tonight. So Isabella, if you wouldn't mind just briefly introducing yourself, the role you play, and I specifically wanted you to talk about the dump on Mark Chagall, and if anyone has another question pertaining to your agenda, such as garbage pickup, which you oversee, not directly, but you oversee it, they can do that too. So Isabella, go ahead, please. Thank you, Mike. Uh, so yeah, my name is Isabella. I work for Public Works. I'm a bioresource engineer, and uh, essentially, I I do a lot of different things at Public Works. Uh, but like Mike, like Mike mentioned, I do a lot of uh, I touch a lot on the environmental side of Public Works. So that's waste management, that's the snow dump, the pump stations, um, contracts, that sort of thing. Um, in terms of the snow dump, I have a I guess a little scoop for you guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's good. Uh, we just got them in yesterday. Yesterday, actually, the uh, test results they uh, they came in yesterday. We got our second sampling done, and everything is still conforming. So everything on that side is good. All the tests that they did for the snow melt is is all conforming. We're all good there. Um, I don't know if anybody passed by the snow dump, but we have started taking down yes. the lovely mountain of snow that uh, that everybody loves Mount to Chagall see. Is, Mount Chagall is being dismounted. We can't yeah. go skiing this summer now. No, Mount Chagall is now a little bit less of a mount. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no skiing to be to be had. Uh, the contractor is going to be there for probably probably until Friday, taking down all the snow, at which point we'll do another two tests to make sure we're still conforming uh, as per the uh, Ministère de l'Environnement uh, requirements. And, uh, and then that's about it for the snow dump. We'll do some work in there. We'll uh, make sure everything is level again. And then that's about it. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a scene of beauty to see it. You could see soft dirt now and it's all being taken away Uh is anyone has any questions because I know people did, but you know what? I'm going to ask him if he wants to ask a question because I saw him on the call. Mark Lockshin. Mark, do you have a question for Isabella about the snow dump? Because I know it's a, a subject dear to your heart. Mark, if you're there. Mark was there. Okay. I saw that he had signed in. So maybe he signed off, but Mark is uh, very big. But I, I think that the question has been oh, answered. Mark, you there? I'm sorry, I was mute. Uh, Mark, go ahead. Do you want to ask a question to Isabella about the snow dump? Because I know it's a subject uh, important to you. Yeah, it is important indeed. But I think Is Isabella pretty much uh, covered uh, the stuff that it relates to, you know, to her jobs. So I, I don't think there is anything uh, that okay. I can ask that, on, on that side. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, so Isabella, uh, the one thing I wanted to ask you uh, to let everybody know, it was a heavy snowfall this winter. And uh, we we have an agreement with Hampstead that is renewed every year by council. Uh, I personally vote against it every year uh, because my constituents uh, would prefer that we save it for ourselves. But uh, can you tell me how did we do this year? At a certain point, we ran out of space. We had to tell Hampstead that we couldn't uh, they couldn't dump their snow there anymore. Yeah, that's right. We uh, we do keep track of all the trucks that come in. We have an attendant there. Uh, one of his jobs is to make to keep track of all the trucks that are coming in from the different uh, contractors and Hampstead. At which point, I'll go and I'll calculate you know, every week uh, what uh, volume of snow we're at. And if we see that we're getting to a certain amount where you know, it's about time that we close it for Hampstead. At that point, we make a decision and uh, and we close it. Obviously, we, I love the snow dump. I think it's a, it's a pretty uh, good uh, asset for us. So we have to close it uh, when yes. we reach a certain amount. Uh, 
yeah, we need to keep our operations uh, primary, have priority, let's say, over Hampstead. Yes, exactly. So we'll see what happens next year. Um, I know uh, some councillors are, uh, uh, you know, we, we we have to be a good neighbor to Hampstead, but we'll have to see. I'm not lobbying anybody, but we'll we'll see how it all how it all turns out. Um, okay. Well, first of all, and Isabella, is there anything about um, since you're here, uh, people often get concerned. What happens if your garbage or your recycling doesn't get picked up? What do you do? What does a resident do? Yeah, so we do have a form online uh, that we uh, that's available for everybody. You can fill out the form, and it's, it goes directly to the technician who is in charge of verifying all the miscollections. You can always call Public Works, email Public Works as well. Um, but on our Code St. Luke Collect app, uh, it's also available online if you don't want to download the app. But there is a place where you can fill out, uh, you know, any issues you're having. You can do that through the app or through the miscollection form uh, that's available online. Terrific. And we have uh, Denitha. I think it's Denitha now. Yeah, Dina. Yeah, Dina's our and new technician. She's awesome. She has experience from other cities. So she uh, she really, you know, came in guns blazing. She knew exactly what was going on and she's really great. So if anybody does have any issues with, you know, collection, with sorting yeah. their waste, anything like that, Dina is definitely there. Yeah, the, best, the best way is to contact me and then I'll speak to her. I and mean, we have a complaint on Mark Chagall where the garbage uh, uh, trucks are showing up uh, before seven in the morning and waking some people up. So she's working with them on that. Yes. So. Yes, I can confirm. I know today she spoke with the supervisor specifically about that issue. So uh, don't quote me on it, but I'm hmm. Thursday. This should not be an issue. Uh, well, anymore. we'll quote you because we're be since we're recorded, you're on the record. <laughs> All right. Then on Thursday morning, I'm going to be there. <laughs> oh, okay. But uh, it shouldn't be an issue. She discussed it with the supervisor today, and uh, they've told us yeah. that they're uh, they're going to take care of it. You work early hours, you and Denita. So can, that's so so we appreciate. It. That's why I'm going to let you go shortly. Sure. Uh, so uh, that's great. So uh, I want to thank you so much for, for being on this call tonight. And I want to thank you also for always being so approachable and available to us as counselors. My uh, pleasure. All right. So uh, get a good night's sleep because you've got to be up at four in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Um, basically, I live very far. So where do you live, by the way? I'm in Pancourt. Oh, Pasta. wow. You're a brave young lady. And you got and you got to go through that uh, that that construction and Kirkland every day now. I do. A couple of years. <laughs> I do. All right. Well, we could find you a nice house. Maybe there's a nice home on Park Place or Jubilee or on Mark Chagall, you know. Uh, <laughs> Might be a little out of my budget, but we could try. We could try something. <laughs> All right. Isabella, thanks again. I really Thank appreciate you. it. Okay. Bye, everyone. Thank you. All right. Bye. Terrific. Uh, we had a question of uh, uh, Marianne Constantine. Uh, Marianne, we will get to that item on the agenda regarding Cavendish, so so stay tuned. We're going to be talking about that shortly. Uh, so uh, we'll answer that question. Uh, so thank you very much for that. Um, I'm going to uh, make a big, a little bit piece of information, especially for people living on uh, on Merrimack, on uh, Rembrandt, on Kildare, that uh, there is going to be uh, some changes to the building at the corner of Cavendish and uh, Kildare, the office building where they're going to, uh, the owners are going to uh, build a, a cafe uh, an out, with a little bit of an outdoor cafe. They're looking at putting in a pharmacy and they have some other proposals that will be coming to council at our June 12th meeting. So stay tuned uh, for more information on that. If you go to my blog at mikecohen.ca, uh, uh, you can, uh, at, at mikecohen.ca, you could, uh, you can, you'll get, get updated when there is. Uh, uh, JP had a question. JP, uh, uh, we'll do that at the end of the meeting. Let good and welfare. And if Stephen Early is still there, he'll be able to answer that question. Are you still there, Stephen? By the way, I'm still here. Yeah. Okay. You know what? Actually, in case Stephen has to leave, JP had a question. JP, you want to ask Stephen the question because I think he could probably answer it. Uh, well, thank you. Um, it's basically because we received this notice telling us that we had to modify our input water system in order to allow the city to install these water meters. And uh, that wasn't in my budget and it's gonna cost us $15,000. I just wanted to know, did I miss something along the way? Uh, is this uh, a test you guys are doing? Um, so I'll, uh, I'll, I'll try to answer the question. So uh, the city over the next year or two is gonna be piloting with 300 residential uh, residential buildings. So it includes about 300 homes and about 80 apartment buildings and, and condo buildings. Uh, now the long-term plan 
is eventually every home, every apartment building, every condo will have a water meter. Right now, I'll share that uh, what we call the ICI, the Institutional Commercial and, uh, and Industrial, all have water meters already. So the malls, for example, uh, all the shopping centers, uh, hospitals and so on already have water meters. Uh, so this pilot involves about 380, uh, like I said, residential buildings or homes. Uh, we were just finalized the list in the last few months, I guess. Uh, now you have, I, I should share, you have the option to refuse. So just so you understand. Uh, however, right now the city, for those that are in the pilot, the city is covering the cost of the meter itself and the installation. Uh, what, what the, let's say the building may have to pay in your case, it depends on, and, I, and this is not my area of expertise, but it depends on the, the diameter of the pipe, uh, so there's certain, so, so for the apartment buildings or condos, they have to do some work to prepare, which is covered by the, the apartment building owner or the condo, let's say, association. So uh, all that to say, you have the right to refuse. However, if you refuse later on, you may have to cover all the costs, including the costs of the meter and installation itself. Uh, but I would say the best thing would be if you want to, if I mean, it's a long story. I can go on for quite a bit longer. Best thing would be just send me an email at s early s e r d e l y i at coatsandluke.org, and I can share a few more details. And we can set up a call uh, to talk about it directly. Stephen, right, thank you. Sort of, then yeah, the no, answer in a nutshell. No, but that's great, and I appreciate you making yourself available. JP is uh, uh, one heck of a volunteer uh, president of a condo uh, for for since I think for all my eighteen years I've been a counselor and a great guy. So. Thank you very much. And he has a beautiful tree. I don't know if that's a real one, JP, but it looks really nice. So it's a real one, but it's not in this area of the city. <laughs> All right. Yes. Dita, I think Dita Bird, who loves trees, would like well, to get I, that I could backdrop. put my house back up. <laughs> okay. That's terrific. Okay. Thank you, Stephen, for that. Okay. So I talked about the building at Cavendish. Uh, I know uh, we have two other important issues. Um, two major ones is the, the master plan, the Cavendish, uh, Cavendish uh, Cartier Cavendish, and the Hydro Quebec. So uh, I'm going to talk about, I'm just going to mention about Cavendish and uh, the Cartier Cavendish um, and uh, any other counselors who want to add. For people living near the mall, we still call it the mall. Uh, we are finalizing our master plan right now, um, which is a vast document, which covers every aspect of the future of our city. But for people living in District 2, the one they're most concerned about is what's going to happen with Cartier Cavendish. And people living in the district of number one, what's going to happen with the Cary Square? And people living in Stephen Erdely's district, uh, uh, what's going to happen with the Coatsy Luke Shopping Center? Or is that Dita Burku's district? I think it's kind of both of yours. Uh, Te uh, technically, it's more Dita's district, more District 3, but it borders with District 4. As right, well. exactly. So, so the master plan is calling for a total redo of the three centers. Now, we don't know what the centers have in mind. We'll be meeting with them to get a little bit more information. So by the end of the summer, uh, we hope uh, we hope by the end of the summer that you'll start having district meetings, uh, whether they'll be in person or online. Uh, I will tell you that based on my polling, people prefer the online uh, version. We have our public council meetings once a month when people could come uh, sometimes twice a month. And the turnout is very, very low. People now prefer to ask their questions by Zoom and watch it remotely. It's one of the only good things that came out of the pandemic. Um, so uh, we will be having a public meeting uh, on on the uh, future uh, of the both, but uh, but Lior Azarad, whose uh, district uh, borders mine, uh, and perhaps Andy Schuster will be having a meeting with me. We'll have we'll have a district meeting once we know what the mall has in mind, and their people will be on the call because we're looking at a major, major, major construction job, and uh, people have been asking me about it already on Park Place, on Jubilee, when I take my walks on the avenue. So uh, does anyone have any questions on that subject? Uh, Mary Ann, did you have a question about that? Mary Ann, you can unmute yourself if you want to ask a question, because I know you sent me lots of emails on it, if you're still there. Uh, and welcome. Uh, uh, Councillor Sabag must have been listening to uh, okay. what I said Hello? about the master plan. Can you hear yeah. me now? Go ahead, Mary Ann, ask your okay. question. So well, I was asking, first of all, you said there's going to be construction on on um, Cavendish. Now I was wondering, is that going to be part, part and parcel of the big, this big project that that is being planned? 
Oh, I just no, no, Marianne. The the whatever construction may occur at the catch Cartier Cavendish is probably a couple of years away. We oh. haven't even we don't even know what they're proposing yet. And then we have to have a council meeting and we have to go through plans and we'd have to approve it. So there's there's no timeline whatsoever. That's when I when I have the special meeting with the owners of the of the okay, so Cartier Cavendish. Another question. At the moment, the Cavendish Mall, I'm there twice a week. I love it. But I see every store is going out. The most recent one is Grecian Staff, just closed this week. Yeah. Why are all these stores going out? Are they, is it because the leases are up and no one wants to come in because they know it's going to be this, the whole thing will come down? But it's sort of sad to see one store after the other, the butcher shop, the, the butcher baker, candlestick maker, everybody's going yeah. out. Yes, yes. Well, listen, that, I mean, look. Uh, the the Sinistars Cine, uh, just signed a built a brand new state of the art theater and has a long term lease. Yeah, so I nice. I don't think I think that when they do change things, I don't think they're looking at necessarily evicting people, but just moving them. I think they're 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 what they've told us publicly is that they'd like to have a like like to move the uh, the the IGA and the uh, and the farmer pre closer to where the gas station is and to have like a, a residential complex there that would be connected to the mall. Uh, and, uh, you know, some of the stores, a lot of them would have an outdoor entrance. So it's a total redo. I'm very curious to see what they're going to do, but we don't know yet. So we're waiting for okay. them to propose it. So, okay, so uh, Marianne, you will definitely be uh, up to date when when we have more and more news okay, on it. I, I just one more thing to say. If you go, if you look at the parking lot, it's packed. Where are all those cars going to park when they're going to the mall, to the shops, the stores, the restaurants? There won't be space. Well, for... it'll be in Marianne. It'll be interesting to see if their proposal includes underground parking because that could be a game changer. But yeah, again, we changer. don't know. We don't know right now enough about what they have planned. We just know that they 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 want to make big changes because the mall is not profitable. And uh, like I said, Oren Sabag, who just joined the call, is in the same predicament as me with what they want to do at uh, the Carry Square. And Dita Berku, uh, our deputy mayor and counselor uh, for what's going to happen at Coats and Luke Shopping Center. So it's the three of them that want to change the face of what they look like right now. Uh, but but we're 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 getting closer to finding out what they have in mind. Okay. And I expect we'll have an exclusive meeting just for this subject when they're ready. And I expect there'll be a very large attendance and a lot of curiosity. Thank so you very uh, okay, much. thank you, Marianne. Okay, thank Norman, you. you had a question. You had a question about the the master plan. Yeah, um, the way I see it, Mike, you know, um, the extension of Cavendish goes hand in hand with the redevelopment of the Cavendish Mall. Uh, I think that for the Cavendish Mall to succeed uh, from a business point of view, I mean, there's got to be that link to Ville Saint Laurent where people can drive in and spend their money and have a good time. And um, I don't know what you think, but, you know, if, if the extension does not go through and right now, I don't know what the timeline is. Do you think it's really feasible that the Cavendish Mall can have a successful redevelopment? I'm going to let uh, Councillor uh, Deputy Mayor Berku answer that question if she's still on the call, uh, because that's her portfolio is the Cavendish extension. Dita, do you have any comment on Norman's question? Yeah, so thank you, Norman. I think that uh, you're absolutely correct. We can't have a redevelopment on the Cavendish Mall without the Cavendish extension. And uh, definitely, um, as we speak, even uh, right now, I am uh, pushing and promoting and trying to accelerate this, uh, this process because the Cavendish extension has been before the Ministry of the Environment for the past year. They filed their notice, the City of Montreal filed their notice uh, a vie de projet in uh, February 2022. And then um, some of you may recall, I asked you to send in your comments. Over 100 people uh, from Cote St. Luke sent in their comments. Probably you did too, uh, Norman. And um, we're waiting for the environmental studies. So it's at the Ministry of the Environment. Next step is to go to the Bureau d'audience publique. And these are, these are steps that we have to uh, go through with that we have no choice, but uh, we're waiting for the environmental studies from the city of Montreal. And once those are filed, then it's gonna go to the BAP. And once it goes to the BAP, then uh, the, the ball gets rolling. But uh, just tonight we heard, because 
Cavendish Mall's connects this Cavendish extension, but Cavendish extension is also connected to the Hippodrome development. And just tonight we heard that the city of Montreal announced the creation of a new working group headed by Pierre Boivin, uh, who was the former uh, manager for the- Oh the yeah, Canadian, the president, right? former president of the Canadians. I didn't know that. Exactly. So he's heading this um, working group and the working group is to, in order to accelerate and to facilitate the development of the Hippodrome, because the city of Montreal has been having some uh, some uh, issues there. So it's all connected, and uh, we're definitely all pushing in that direction. I agree. Uh, can I add that I think also to redevelop the Coats and the Shopping Centre, I, I just don't see it be successful if Cavendish is not extended. Well, no, the Coats and the Shopping Centre has a, is a different is on a different mobility axis. Let's put it that way. Uh, what we're looking for is a train station right in the middle of the Coats and the Shopping Centre, right smack right there. And I'm surprised, Norman, if you've been following all the master plan consultations. You haven't heard about the Corridor Vert, which is also a transport corridor, which is going to um, basically come down from Saragay, which is in the um, in Saint Laurent, and is going to be uh, built by Hydro Quebec eventually when they do the um, upgrading of the whole system. So you're going to have a active transport corridor which for bikes and and uh and uh pedestrians to walk down and it's going to crisscross at cabin at the Coats and Luke shopping center where we're we're lobbying both uh the city of Coats and Luke and the Coats and Luke shopping center is lobbying to get a train station and once we have a train station there then it's going to be much easier to to deal with the transport needs development goes with transport there's no question about it Okay, Norman, I'm going to cut you off at the second question because I want to move on. But at the end of the meeting, at the end of the meeting, Good and Welfare, anyone can ask questions on any subject. Uh, but I want people to stay with the meeting because I really want people to hear about uh, Hydro-Quebec. So Cavendish was just the developed master plan. Please go to coatsayloop.org slash engage. Uh, it's a very, very excellent site. And you'll be able to learn all about our master plan. Uh, Tanya Abramovich, who's our associate, city manager has done an outstanding job uh, over the last year and a half on this and it's really something and it's really fascinating all this stuff the subject matter that has been talked to including home businesses um, and you name it it's on there um, okay I'm gonna talk about hydro and I'm glad I have Dita and I have Stephen Early who's led the charge uh, and actually David Torgman uh, who uh, when he was a counselor was also on that file uh, uh, so next next Monday night uh, there's a meeting at the Aquatic and Community Center at 6.30 p.m. Uh, till 9 p.m. Uh, about uh, Hydro-Quebec. And there's two issues regarding Hydro-Quebec. One is the, the major plan, which I'm going to ask Councillor Early to talk about. And secondly is people living on Merrimack who have been waiting for a uh, new hydro grid to be put in uh, place. Uh, this was supposed to happen many years ago but the condo association, which I live in, uh, could not come up with an agreement uh, on servitudes. But we know that uh, we're an accident waiting to happen. Our neighbors on Kildare Road lost power for uh, about a week in the winter, and it was a real misery. And when they finally were able to install something, everyone on Merrimack and a lot of people on Rembrandt lost power. So we know uh, by some miracle, we didn't lose power during the ice storm. I don't know how that happened, but, uh, but we really are uh, um, really need to have this. So the plan by Hydro, and there's been more information for people on Merrimack, uh, will be uh, the plan is for the summer of 2025 to redo the network. However, they must meet with the Meadows condominium and come up with an agreement on the servitude. But we have this meeting next Monday. Uh, Stephen, if you're still there, I, I, wouldn't, I would appreciate you just giving everyone should uh, everyone who's living in that immediate area should try to come to that meeting at, at the, the ACC because it's to do with the major, major uh, project where they're going to uh, build new towers. Uh, Stephen, uh, could yeah. you talk about it? Yeah, maybe I'll give I'll I'll give like a two three minute update on this. So as uh, as Councillor Cohn mentioned, uh, if you're able to come next Monday, June fifth, at the ACC, there'll be a presentation. So. Uh, there'll be a presentation from 6.30 to 7, and then from 7 to 9, 
uh, be a chance to you know look at pictures and and get more information and ask some general questions. Uh, but in a nutshell, it's to upgrade the line as as Councilor Burku mentioned between Aqueduct and Saragay. So Aqueduct is in La Salle and Saragay is in Saint Laurent. Uh, now the the line that's there goes back to 1955, including the the substation that's just behind Mount Sinai. Uh, you can imagine it's almost 70 years old. The life span of one of these substations is less than 70 years. Uh, and what we've seen in the last few years, and, and you probably have experienced this yourself, is power outages that have affected the entire grid, uh, that have knocked out the entire Samstead substation. And, and again, it's because it's it's beyond its, its lifespan. Uh, so what Hydro is proposing is to upgrade the substation and also increase the voltage of the line. So currently, the line is at 120 kilovolts, so they'd upgrade it to 315 kilovolts. And the reason here is also because uh, people are using more power. I, I hate to say it, uh, you know, I'm I'm sort of a, an example of people switching over to, you know, in my house, we've switched over to electric vehicles. Uh, we switched our oil furnace to an electric furnace. We got rid of our hot water tank that was oil, uh, although we have put in more insulation in the house and, and so on, but we're still using more electricity. and in the next 10 to 15 years, that is going to be the norm. Every home in Cote St. Luke will end up with one or two electric vehicles as, as uh, internal combustion engines are phased out. So what Hydro is proposing is an upgrade to the line, uh, to the network, and uh, of course it'll help us in the long run, uh, but uh, along with that comes new towers, which will be higher because it's a higher voltage. So they'll be taller than the existing towers. So uh, from an aesthetic point of view, it's not going to be as pretty, but they are looking at a bit of a detour, and I don't want to get into that now, but we'll, we'll hear more about that next Monday, but a, a bit of a detour that will help avoid uh, a big chunk of District 2, uh, so of uh, District 2 and I, I guess District 8 as well. So it's being proposed, uh, and Hydra will share more information, and I will be there as well to sort of help facilitate and, and answer questions and share the point of view of the city uh, on this topic. So again, that's next Monday night. Yeah, thank you very much, Stephen. And it is it is a very important issue. Uh, and uh, if anybody has any questions um, regarding regarding that, uh, by all means, please uh, please please raise your hand, uh, and uh, we'd be happy to answer your question. Alex Alexandra Deno has a question uh, on that subject. Go ahead, Alex. Uh, hi. Um, in the meadows, we have the towers that are literally in our backyards and the towers that they're proposing are, I would say, monstrously big. Um, are we talking about building these giant structures in our backyard? So maybe I'll maybe I'll answer. So the so there's a few things. So the towers will be higher. However, the footprint will be the same. So just to so whatever the, and I don't have the exact measurements in front of me, but whatever the footprint of the current tower, the new tower will have the same footprint. And I'll also say that hydro is gonna be pushing them a bit further back. In other words, away from the, uh, let's say away from the meadows, away from the homes and so on, closer to the train tracks. So they'll be a bit further away with the same footprint, but higher. As for the exact location of the, the specific tower, I can't tell you where it's gonna go. Uh, but the goal is to to have them further away from the homes, uh, condos, townhouses, et cetera. To, to be fair, they're same footprint, but they're huge concrete structure from what I saw, which are no longer transparent. So I'll just share, there's two types that are being looked at. Uh, some are what the sort of the current type of pylons, which are made of metal. Uh, and for some, they're looking at uh, two, but I don't think, I, I don't know specific, I don't, you know, I don't want to speak to specific towers directly behind the meadows, but I know most of them will be the same format as the current. Uh, the only issue is sometimes where it's a curve, where it's a turn. Uh, you can imagine the, the forces are greater on the turn, so they have to use sometimes a different type of tower. Uh, but I would say a question like that, I don't want to tell you the wrong information, so I would say the best thing would be to come to the presentation next Monday and they can, they actually will have a map that shows you where each tower will go and, and Hydro can better answer that question. Yeah, I would recommend people living in the meadows try to come or if not send their neighbors. Uh, I mean, I'll be there to update 
but we we are looking at uh, the possibility. We've even talked about the possibility of that there may be less towers, and that they might we might have less towers at the meadow than we have right meadows right now as well. So we don't really know. That's the purpose of the meeting next Monday for them to kind of update us, and we'll have we'll have more information on this. So these are two separate projects. There's the towers that were supposed to start in 2023, and it's been delayed for a variety of reasons. Uh, and, and a brand new substation, which should be good for everybody living in the entire West End of Montreal. So, uh, all right, Alex, you, you answered the questions answered. Uh, just to finish, Mike, can we count on you if we're not able to attend to publish some of that information and relay it yes. to like yes. a district? Uh, I think not only that, but uh, I know Councillor Burku is very concerned about getting the word out. Dita, as Deputy Mayor, what is your plan to get the word out on this project for people who aren't able to attend that meeting? So, Mike, um, first of all, I think that we did ask Hydro about live streaming. And the response was that uh, if we do it, they're okay with it. So I think tomorrow morning, you know, we just have to figure that out because uh, if we can live stream, then of course it's going to be easier for people to, to follow. And uh, I do encourage everyone to show up. Um, we're going to be distributing flyers, posters, going to be on Facebook. Uh, like you, Mike, I'm anxiously waiting for that uh, communication to come out. But people have to understand it's not our presentation. And that's, that's right. That's the problem that we've been having. Um, Hydro has gone around uh, the other to the other towns. Uh, they've already done Saint Laurent and uh, they did uh, one in Hampstead in Montreal West. But we're ex we hope that the residents of Cote Saint Luc are going to come out in great numbers because we want really to inform everyone and to also to tell Hydro, you know, what our concerns are. After the last ice storm, a lot of people asked, why aren't we burying the wires? And so, you know, this is a very important question. And people have to understand that we do not control hydro. So we have to speak directly to hydro and the residents have to come out and speak directly to hydro. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And Marianne Constantine, don't worry, uh, this construction work is not going to be related to our hydro bills. The hydro bills do not get higher because they're doing construction in, and, uh, in our area. And um, if I could, uh, sorry, I'll, if I could just add, yeah. uh, regarding the water, just to clarify as well, uh, the the long the purpose of the water meters long term is not to increase taxes, but it's to to tax people based on their water use. Uh, right now, residents are taxed not on their water use, but they're taxed on their valuation. So if you have a larger home, you pay more in water tax. If you have a smaller home, you pay less in water tax. Uh, the goal is to tax people based on how much water they use. So if you're if you're using a lot of water and wasting, then you would pay higher in the future. And if you're very conservative, then you'd pay less, and uh, just as as your hydro bill works based on your consumption. Thank hey, Stephen, thank you for your vast knowledge on the subject throughout this whole process. I really appreciate it. Uh, uh, we have a. Uh, I have one last item before we open it to any questions. And uh, Jacob uh, Wazana, a constituent of mine on Jubilee, uh, wants to uh, didn't uh, I guess didn't hear the part about Cavendish, the Cartier Cavendish. So Jacob, just to let you know. Uh, Lior Azarad and I will be co-hosting a District 2, Special District 2 meeting sometime in the next few months. As soon as we have information and as soon as the owners of the Cavendish Mall are available and they will be explaining what they have in mind to redo the mall. We've had no proposal. We've had no votes. We're, we're simply at the information stage right now. Uh, but we do know from uh, announcement they, they've already made that they want to redo the mall. We call it the mall. They want to have residential uh, a residential part in the mall with a high rise. Uh, they want to move some stores around. It, it's a total redo would be a very big job. And of course, for people living on Jubilee, the Avenue and Park Place, you're right next to it. It, it. But I was talking to a resident on Jubilee the other day, I won't say his name, and he was quite excited about it. His personal opinion was, you know, short term pain for long term gain, because you're going to have like a state of the art shopping center there when they're finished. Uh, and you might have your parents or family living in the high rise Rex next door. You'll save a lot of money on babysitting. So, so who knows, but we'll wait for the information. We don't have that information yet, Jacob, but uh, I'll see you on my walks and we can certainly discuss that. And I, I made note of your, of your email address. Uh, and uh, I will, uh, I'm M Cohen at coatsandloop.org. So feel free to email me at any time. 
so thank you very much on the hydro subject. Uh, the last item I wanted to make a mention of was uh, Sheila Finestone Park, which is uh, a park that we're naming on Mark Chagall. Uh, Isidore Goldberg Park is right next door. We'll be putting the Isidore Goldberg Park sign in the proper place where it hasn't been ever. Uh, that park is like right behind the apartment buildings on Sir Walter Scott. And we will be having uh, a unveiling ceremony for the Sheila Finestone Park, of course, our former member of parliament for Mount Royal. Uh, and uh, we'll be doing that some point. I don't know, sometime between June and August. I haven't got the exact date. We're waiting for the signage. So I know someone had asked me uh, that question as well. Um, and uh, other than that, uh, does anyone have any questions on anything else? before we conclude. And uh, this this has been recorded, uh, this session, so I will make it available uh, once we download it on, on uh, my website and on uh, my Facebook page so people could watch it. So uh, I see uh, Stephen Spodek, who I call my Senator. Senator Spodek, he's one of my chief advisors. Um, uh, Stephen, go ahead. Thank you, Mike. Uh, I will uh, contribute to your upcoming campaign, the next one, if I did in the last <laughs> That's a pledge, two and a half years in advance. Okay, terrific. You can count on me, Mike. Thank um, you, Stephen. You, I'm glad you mentioned uh, the park and the naming, because my wife, Ruth, and I walked by there actually just yesterday. And it's very impressive what was done. And you can yes. see the, um, the planting of the trees and what value that will add to people in that area in the years to come. So. You know, kudos to you and kudos to the uh, to the city for that. So kudos to our public works department Correct. and kudos to Mayor Brownstein, who was very active in helping me make sure that that got done because the people from the Equinox who used the land ruined it. And we had a lot of litigation, but it is a beautiful looking park and people are really thrilled about that. Thank so, you for the kind words, Stephen. Congratulations, Mike. And All right. Senator. I, I, the honorable senator. That's it. Well, I do want to create a Senate in Cote St. Luke, and Stephen's definitely one of my, would be one of my appointees, that's for sure. <laughs> All right, uh, Toby Shulman, go ahead, Toby. My question is for Councillor Erdely. I'm still interested in having composting in my building, and I'm wondering if you could give us an update on that. So... I'll, uh, I'll try to answer. I know we've talked about this a few times over the years, Toby. So we, we have implemented it in some of the uh, high rises, some of the multifamily units. Uh, what we've seen is it's more complicated. Uh, the ones where we've been more successful are the ones that have multiple shoots or smaller buildings. Uh, I know yours is a larger building, but I, uh, I can tell you, let me, I, you know, I've spoken to BB about this, to Isabella. Uh, let me follow up to see where, uh, where things are at and I'll get back to you, okay? Thank you. I, I, I tried to get uh, my building to, to get a, a brown bin and people who were interested in composting could pay $5 for a key or something like that so that they could put their compost in there. And I even volunteered to push the brown bin out, out, out to the streets on the day that it was collected, but it didn't go anywhere. Maybe I need some help from the city on that. Let me uh, let me speak to I'll speak to Isabella. I don't know. I don't. I think she's off the call now. But she's I'll, off the call now. She's yeah. sleeping now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll speak to her. I know she's she's got to be up earlier in the morning than I do. So I will. I'll follow up with her and Bibi and uh, and get back to you. Thank you. Right. Thanks, okay. Toby. Thank you. Uh, and Norman Sabin, you'll have the last question before we conclude. Again, I'll remind everybody. Uh, M Cohen at CoatsyLoop.org, and check my website at MikeCohen.ca for frequent updates. Uh, Norman, go ahead. One question, please. Yeah. Uh, Mike, you were referring to the building at Cavendish and uh, Kildare. That's the uh, Royal Bank building, right? That's right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and you said there was going to be a restaurant there. And uh, that? that's what they're proposing. And uh, we're, council is going to have a vote at the June 12th meeting on the proposal. I don't have all the details in front of me, but I've already done a blog on the fact that they want to have a cafe in there. Uh, and uh, it's owned by uh, the Beton family, uh, Holland uh, Holland Leasing, which also has the car dealership, and they're they've lived in the community for a long time. Uh, but I think uh, a cafe with an outdoor cafe in the summer will be just fantastic at that corner. The reason I'm asking is because I'm a family doctor, and I've thought about opening up a medical clinic there. Yes. And one of the things that 
codes and loop does not have is uh, medical imaging. So if you want to go for an X-ray or an ultrasound or what, yes, you're you right. Know, oh my God, you ever right? Can I try? You know, and, uh... if if I say, uh, Mike, uh, you know, you got to go for a chest X-ray. You know, where do you go? If I say, Dita, where do you go for an abdominal ultrasound? And that might be a great place to, you know, have a medical imaging well, center. Uh, at. Uh, uh, Norman, um, I can put you in touch with the the people there because they and uh, Lior has something he wants to add on this. But uh, yes, yeah, so uh, just go ahead, little, Lior. Yeah. Just a little note is that they have requested as well uh, for some medical. So yes, so imaging and all that. That's on the list of the requests as well as. Um, as well as the uh, the cafe, so yeah, they want they, they, they want to put a that. they want to put a pharmacy in there. They uh, right. uh, like a uh, um, you know more like uh, not a full pharmacy, uh, but but a small one that can take prescriptions. They want to have doctors' offices, and I think you're a hundred percent right. What a beautiful contribution that would be, uh, Norman. I would love to have your practice in my district. It would be an honor. Lior, what were you saying by imaging? What do you mean exactly? They, they're they in their uh, requests for uh, zoning changes. One of the one of the requests they've received is to go and be able to get uh, some medical facilities in there, including imaging, including X-rays or anything like that. So they won't be the ones doing it. Obviously, it could depend on the capability of being able to offer that service in yeah. the building based on the zoning, and then they would be able to you know try to get uh, possible uh, you know private. Uh, companies or organizations or depending on who it would be yeah. but i do I know that they are looking at that for all the people living on rembrandt mary mac mark chagall elan ramon sir walter scott cavendish in toby shulman's building <laughs> the avenue i mean to have a, a, a kind of more medical services and, and possibly imaging what a what a coup that would be for all of us yeah. mike not yeah. just for quote st luke for people in hampstead montreal of course. West. i mean but i mean imagine if i could walk over there for an x-ray wow um, well, you, yeah but other people can drive there too they have parking in the back they there. could they could but Stay tuned. There's going to be more information. As I said, June 12th, I believe we're getting our first proposal from them that we're going to vote on and there'll be others. Uh, so does the senator have another question? I'm, I'm, do I hear that Norman Saban is accepting patients? I mean, uh... <laughs> OK, let's not put that. I, I, Norman, I'm going to need you one day, too, when my my doctor retires. So keep me on your list. OK. <laughs> I've taken a few from Rembrandt Avenue actually in the last two months, just to let you know. <laughs> okay, well, that's I think that's the biggest news story of the whole call. You know, a family doctor. Look, he's at you're at the office right now, eh? Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. Is that your office or your house? Yeah. No, it's my office. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, at the Queen Elizabeth Health Center. Oh, wonderful. Well, yeah, Cavendish and Kildare is much better, Norman. Much yes, better place. Absolutely. Less <laughs> less to drive. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, uh, what will happen? Evelyn uh, wants to know what will happen to the RBC branch. Uh, nothing's happening. That's staying where it is, Evelyn, the, uh, the, the, the RBC. They just got a lot of offices there that they're going to rework. Uh, I think there's a lot of space that's not being used there. But um, uh, I will have, a, you know, we will have a, a future meetings and we'll make uh, Aaron, Aaron Bitton. Uh, but watch the meeting on uh, June 12th. You can come to City Hall at uh, eight o'clock for the meeting, or you could watch it online on our website and you'll you'll learn more. And I'll be blogging about it uh, on mikecohen.ca as, as I have more information. So, uh, and I'll get a, a big exclusive interview with Dr. Sabin when he decides to move into the building. So, uh, all right, terrific. Uh, okay, so uh, I think we've covered all the items on the agenda. I wanna thank everyone for joining us. Uh, we had close to 50 people here at the height of the meeting. Um, and again, I, I really appreciate this virtual format. Uh, a lot of my meetings are held building by building where I meet with, with a building at a time and uh, we end up getting like 100 at a meeting. And I'm gonna keep doing that. Uh, I'm, I walk the district several times a week, mostly on the weekends uh, with a pen and pad in hand. Uh, and uh, I also uh, will do more of that when I'm off in the summer. Uh, people know they can email me. And of course, whenever I stick my head out on Mary Mac, one of my neighbors says, hi, Mike. And then they complain about something. <laughs> so, but not Senator Spodek. He does not complain. He contributes. So thank you for that. All right. Thanks, everyone. We did the meeting in just over an hour. I really appreciate it. And a recording of the meeting will be up on my website uh, within the next day or so. So again, thanks, everyone. Thank uh, our city councilors for joining us. And thank you, Glenn, Glenn Nashen, for for being there as my advisor. And thank you, David Torchman, our former city councilor, for joining us as well. Good night, everybody. Thank you.